Hello, my name is Liam Vernon and welcome to my presentation. Today I will be talking about the impact of virtual reality safe spaces on anxiety and effect. So to start out, I'll talk a little bit about anxiety. So anxiety disorders are the most common mental health issue faced within our society, with over one third of the population being diagnosed with a related disorder. A person's anxiety can manifest itself in numerous forms, such as phobias, panic disorders or health anxiety. People experiencing this may be prone to somatic symptoms such as stomach aches, blushing, or even recurrent and unexpected panic attacks. In more severe cases of anxiety, these symptoms can be so debilitating that it has been related to high levels of work absence due to sickness. It also has a strong link with educational absence as well as a negative test performance, and this has led to anxiety disorders being recognised as a large cause of disability worldwide. So as anxiety is so prevalent within our society, it is often comorbid with other mental health disorders such as depression and PTSD. And those with these disorders are often found to be of a higher risk of self-harming behaviours as well as suicidal tendencies. This has led to high emphasis being placed on intervention of anxiety disorders, with the aim to minimise any current risk for the person, as well as focusing on lessening the potential for the condition to worsen and preventing further symptoms developing. Intervention programmes have been introduced into workplaces and schools with the aim to utilise cognitive behavioural therapy or CBT with large populations. CBT is seen as a favoured treatment for anxiety as it aims to combine the person's thoughts, feelings and behaviours and makes use of a collaborative relationship to understand how these interact and alter negative aspects. This is often done through small goals known as homeworks between each session and focuses a lot on goal-driven behaviours. Whilst this has been seen to be effective in helping to combat anxiety, it's a lengthy process and requires a high level of commitment and collaboration from the client. This means it can take a while for someone to see the benefits of CBT and its effectiveness. Another method for helping with anxiety is through relaxation techniques, which a lot of people are starting to turn towards technology for. One example of this is virtual reality. This has been used a lot more now in therapy, as VR headsets can create immersive environments for its users, allowing natural movement and real-time interaction with virtual scenarios. This is useful in engrossing its user into different worlds entirely. A common use of VR in therapy is exposure therapy, as it enabled the therapist to maintain control over a scenario, as well as opening up possibilities of exposing scenarios that may have been impossible before, things such as war zones or in-flight situations. VR has also been purposed for relaxation techniques, with research showing athletes placed in virtual environments found they felt more relaxed and engaged and were more highly likely to use this intervention in the future. Virtual reality has started to become a more commercial product over the years, with initial prices freezing out a lot of its user base when it was first introduced. Now there are more budget headsets available, as well as devices for mobile phones that can help to give a very basic VR experience. This has led to an uptake of VR systems in the common household and therefore higher usage of its applications. One of these uses is self-led relaxation techniques. Research has shown that more people begin to engage with relaxation at home through their VR and find a positive effect on their mood. Although one worry was its integration with an older population who are more stereotypically technophobic. Although recent research has been done and it has found that VR is accepted by a variety of age groups, including older adults. So now VR has become more popular and more people are engaging with it for relaxation purposes, we aim to see whether a virtually generated environment can help reduce anxiety throughout different age groups. We aim to look at three different populations, those being secondary school students, higher education students and an older adult population. We wanted to compare whether a virtual environment would be more significant in reducing anxiety over just a blank screen or no VR at all. So here we decide on three hypotheses. Number one would be that it would be a significant effect for each population for the VR safe space on the calm questionnaire compared to blank screen and no VR. Number two would be that it would be a significant effect for each population for VR safe space on the PANAS positive scale compared to blank screen and no VR. And the final one would be that there would be a significant effect for each population for VR safe space on the PANAS negative scale compared to blank screen and no VR. We aim to recruit 90 participants overall, involving 30 from each population. From there, they would then be randomly allocated to the VR safe space, the VR blank screen and the no VR condition. The higher education students were recruited from Bangui University through the Student Study Participation Panel known as SONA. The secondary school students were recruited from Real High School and the older adult population were recruited from Hollywell Dementia Cafe as well as three assisted living homes known as Cleese Jasmine, Cleese Eleanor and Cleese Raddington.
The study incorporated a mixed measure design with a between subjects independent variable being exposure condition, which was VR versus blank screen versus no VR. The within subjects independent variable was time, so pre exposure versus during exposure versus post exposure. The three dependent variables included the anxiety scores from the current anxiety level measure, or the CALM questionnaire, the effect scores from the brief measures of positive and negative affect, known as the PANAS questionnaire, and the experience of the participant from a questionnaire that we designed, which was completed at the end of the study. The CALM questionnaire included 16 statements, which involve rating both somatic senses and emotions, such as I am feeling nervous and my heart is pounding, whilst the PANAS questionnaire involved 20 word statements, including positive and negative mood affects such as interested, scared or determined. Participants were asked to rate these dependent on how they felt in the moment with a five point Likert scale ranging from not at all to extremely. Participants were then given a questionnaire in which they rated their experience and gave feedback about the VR experience after seeing the environment. Participants in the VR safe space and blank screen conditions were asked to wear an Oculus Go headset, which you can see here at the top right. When possible, we encourage them to fit the headset independently or with assistance from a carer or guardian. Those who are in the VR safe space environment were then shown a nighttime campfire scene, which can be seen here in the bottom right. Those in the other two conditions received the chance to see this environment post-test if they chose to do so. Upon starting the experiment, participants received a hard copy of an information sheet and after reading through, we were asked to sign a consent form. When needed, the researcher would read this out to the participant verbally and if they were unable to sign their consent, verbal consent was asked for and a carer or guardian would sign also. For the secondary students, a consent form and information sheet were sent out prior to the testing dates in order for them to be filled in by the parent or guardian. Participants were then handed a demographics questionnaire which asked basic information such as age and gender. It also asked whether they experienced virtual reality before, as well as any medical history from the past, such as depression, anxiety or stress, as well as dementia and Alzheimer's. After the questionnaires were completed, the participant was asked to think of a calm thought and to hold it for 30 seconds. After that, they were then read the statements from the researcher from the calm and panas questionnaires, giving verbal answers to each statement. This was then followed by a small break if needed before asking their participants to think of a thought that made them feel anxious. In a similar fashion to the calm thought, participants were asked to hold this thought for a while and then to remain with that thought as the researcher went through the questionnaires again. Participants were then told of the condition that they were allocated to and those in the VR safe space and VR blank screen conditions were asked to fit the headset on. Participants were reminded they were able to remove the headset at any time if it did become uncomfortable and they were then given five minutes to adjust to the environment. This was then followed by the statements again from the researcher, with participants rating them as before. Post VR, the participant was asked to think of a calm thought again and follow the same procedure of holding that thought for 30 seconds. After this, the researcher went through the questionnaires with them for the final time. After all this was completed, the participant was given the second questionnaire where they rated their experience and were then given a debrief sheet. Those who had not been able to experience the VR scenario were offered an, offered an opportunity to do so and were then asked to write any feedback on the second questionnaire if they wanted to. For the results, separate mixed ANOVAs were conducted to compare the effect of VR safe space, VR blank screen and no VR conditions on the calm scores for anxiety levels after engaging with anxious thoughts. This was to see if there was any significant interaction between anxiety levels and which control the participants were placed in. The graphs included in these slides are to show the increase and decrease in mean calm scores between each stage of the study. As you can see, anxiety spiked during the anxious thought condition and steadily returned to a normal level throughout the rest of the study. Unfortunately, while the secondary school student showed a significant main effect for the CALM scores throughout each condition, there was no significant effect of the condition itself, as well as no significant interaction between the scores and the exposure condition, as can be seen by the values at the bottom of the screen, with only the CALM scores showing a significance of 0 0.001. The higher education students shown similar results, with a high spike in anxiety during the anxious thought task. Although whilst again showing a significant main effect for the CALM scores throughout each section, there was no significant effect of the condition and no significant interaction between the CALM scores and exposure condition. Finally, for the older adults, we found a significant main effect for CALM scores up until post-exposure, whereas here we can see that anxiety was still rated highly post-exposure in both the VR safe space condition and the no VR condition. Unfortunately, there was still no significant main effect of condition or a significant interaction between the CALM scores and exposure condition.
For the Panas scores, unfortunately, due to the current circumstances, I have been unable to fully complete analysis on the, both the positive and negative affect scores, therefore I will be unable to include them in this presentation, as I would rather have the full data to discuss. So what do the common results mean for our experiment? Well, whilst it was shown that anxiety scores were significant throughout the study, the condition that the participant was in had no effect on their anxiety levels decreasing. This would mean that whilst the anxious task was sufficient enough to raise a participant's anxiety ratings, the following VR exposure would not have any effect, and instead merely being away from the anxious stimuli resulted in their levels returning to normal over time. For the older adult population, the anxiety ratings showed no significance from VR exposure to post-VR, and a possible explanation for this is concentration levels. We had found that throughout the study, those that had dementia had often found it hard to concentrate for the whole study, as well as struggling keeping with immediacy during the calm thought and anxious thought conditions. This may have been a factor in the ratings of the statement, as often they would relate it to past experiences, rather than to how they were feeling in the current moment. This led to them often being confused as to why they should be feeling anxious or scared. Future research with this population could investigate alternative tasks to complete that may be able to induce the level of anxiety needed for the experiment, but something that can also be adapted as well. It may also be useful to consider shortening the length of the study in order to help keep the concentration throughout. But although we did not find any significance in the interaction, we did receive interesting feedback from our participants after the study. Many who experienced the virtual reality environment spoke positively about its effect, with many stating that they felt relaxed looking at the environment and wearing the headset. We did receive some comments that people had initial anxiety that something was hiding in the background or that something else was going to occur. This seemed to be due to the nighttime scenario, as they thought that maybe something could be hiding in the shadows. Future research could look at using a varying time of day to see if this affects the initial mindset going into the environment, and if maybe sunny days or a rainy day might have a different effect. Although regardless of the initial fears, participants often said they started to feel relaxed in the environment once they realised it was all safe. An interesting observation was only three of the older adult population had ever used virtual reality before, now they had only ever used it once. Although similar to past research, we did find a large majority were interested in the headset and willing to try it out, although a few mentioned that they could not see the point of VR. This could also be taken up by further research, maybe looking into what preferences an older adult population would have for a VR environment, and even then tailoring specific environments to their lifestyles and preferences. One thing I noticed was the older adults' reluctance to write certain negative emotions or statements. When asked about things such as being stressed or anxious, I was usually met with a statement along the lines of, there's nothing I should be anxious about, or there's no point in being stressed, I am too old. This appeared concurrent with answers given in the demographics questionnaire, with the majority stating they had never experienced anxiety or depression. This differed majorly to the higher education and secondary school populations, where participants' experiences were a lot more mixed. But overall, I still believe that virtual reality has a real potential when it comes to relaxation, and I think future research could expand on the virtual environment and add different features such as guided meditations or other relaxation techniques. And with that, thank you for listening. Hope you've enjoyed the presentation today. Please feel free to leave any comments below and I'll try to answer any questions you may have. If you'd like to read any of the research included in the presentation, then please feel free to look at the reference list included.